Both of you proposed new plans this week to address the uh, economic crisis. Senator McCain, you proposed a $52 billion plan that includes new tax cuts on capital gains, tax breaks for seniors, write-offs for stock losses, among other things. Senator Obama, you proposed $60 billion in tax cuts for middle-income and lower-income people, more tax breaks to create jobs, new spending for public works projects to cre create jobs. I will ask both of you, why is your plan better than his? Uh, Cynthia McKinney, a Green Party presidential nominee, you have uh, two minutes to give us your view of the financial <laughs> crisis and why your plan would be better. Thank you very much. First of all, let me um, thank you for inviting me to be with you. And also, I'd like to thank Trevor Lyman of ThirdPartyTicket.com, who has also organized an event a debate, a third-party debate on October 19th from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and I will be participating. I've put together a 14-point plan, which is available on our website, runcynthiarun.org. And in those 14 points is included um, a elimination of adjustable rate mortgages, predatory lending, and any of the discriminatory practices that um, help to fuel the crisis that we're experiencing. In addition to that, um, I also call for the elimination of derivatives trading, which is one of the major problems. Um, I also call for David Walker, to, for, who is the former Comptroller General of the United States, to oversee all of the entities that have um, received taxpayer funding. He is the one who was in charge of auditing the United States government and basically left in disgust because people in the Congress and in the White House were not listening to his admonitions. I also call for the nationalization of the Federal Reserve and the establishment of a banking system, a nationalized banking system, that really responds to the needs of people and our country. Our country needs investment in infrastructure, in manufacturing, and in greening our economy. And um, that could be accomplished through such a banking system that belongs to the American people. And then I would also just like to say I agree that U.S. corporations should not receive tax subsidies for moving jobs overseas. And that's a piece of legislation that I actually introduced when I was in the Congress. Two minutes on your views on the, the tone of the campaign and some of the exchange between Senator McCain and Senator Obama about uh, John Lewis. Well, I would uh, rather uh, give my um, impressions of what differentiates the campaigns of independent and third-party candidates, and that is, I believe, that we talk about the issues. Former Comptroller General David Walker said that now is a time that this country needs leadership, not lagship. But unfortunately, uh, we're getting more lagship than leadership. For example, the issues that I've been talking about as I've gone around this country have been the tremendous impact that the Bush tax cuts have had on income inequality in our country. The sad fact of the matter is that we are experiencing the kind of income inequality not experienced since the Great Depression. In addition to that, I've been talking about the need to repeal the Patriot Acts so that we can safeguard our civil liberties, protect the Constitution, and uh, the Bill of Rights. I've also been talking about um, the death penalty. Because, of course, in the state in which I was born, we have a young man who, um, for whom a, a, a death date has been set. And he's had seven witnesses to recant their testimony in a trial. We need to talk about justice in this country. And I'm talking about the case of Troy Davis. We do need to talk about the administration of the death penalty. Um, it's uh, interesting that. Um, Categorically, uh, I support single payer, and I believe that uh, uh, Ralph Nader does as well. We we make no bones about our support for a single payer health care system in this country. And just last week, 5,000 physicians wrote a letter, and they said that it was the only morally 
responsible as well as fiscally responsible solution to the health care problems that face our country. One minute, your response, especially to the issue of ACORN, because this has now become a major issue as, as to whether there's voter fraud or voter suppression going on in, in this election. First of all, I think I should say that I believe that the people in this country need a political party and a movement that places our values on the political agenda. Obviously, um, with that exchange, that's not the case. Um, there's something else that's a bit more troubling. I've also been talking about election integrity as I've gone across this country. But, um, you know, I really don't like the idea that the face of election fraud, given the past two presidential elections, is now a, a, a face of color and uh, one of poor people. In 2000, when people went to the polls, when the voters went to the polls, they were met with confusing ballots, manipulation of the voter lists, electronic voting machines that didn't work, inappropriately or ineffectively or poorly trained officials who weren't familiar with the workings of those machines. And we know what the problems with those machines have been and are. We still have those problems that have been with us since 2000. In 2004, they added to these problems with the electronic poll books, the sleepovers that were discovered, uh, where the machines weren't even secured, uh, even intensifying the, the failures of the machines with the vote flipping and uh, usually in only one direction, the battery uh, freezes in, uh, in the midst of voters actually trying to cast their votes. And now we've got voter ID laws across the country, and we've got voter caging, which is a fancy way of purging people from the voter files. So now, what kind of election is it when neither of the political parties is addressing the issue, the fundamental issue, of whether or not our votes are even going to be counted. Now to Cynthia McKinney on this, then we go to break and one more topic. Cynthia McKinney. Great. Uh, I agree with Nader that um, we need to repeal NAFTA and all of those so-called uh, free trade agreements, but um, they, are, they don't constitute fair trade. And um, with respect to Colombia, I can say that um, not only have I been to Colombia, I have seen the devastation of the militarization of our policy, particularly with Colombia, and the displacement, particularly of the Afro-Colombian communities across that country. In addition, I would say that um, as a result of the unfair elections that have been held, particularly in Uribe, where there should, uh, in uh, Colombia, where uh, Uribe was elected, there should have been an Afro Colombian woman elected as president. Her name was Piedad Cordoba. But instead of being elected, she was kidnapped and she was forced out of the country. Now she's back in Colombia serving as a United as a um, Colombian senator. What we must in in, in, in encourage is a relationship with countries around the world where we engage in fair trade, not free trade. We pay a fair price for the resources and other uh, things that we need. We respect